Hi, I'm here with Jim Herbertson with, uh, from IPECA. Uh, Jim, um, thank you very much for your time uh, this afternoon. Could you please tell us a bit about the challenges facing the transport industry to reach the targets set by the Paris Agreement? Yeah, sure. I mean, one of the pieces of work that IPEC has done uh, after Paris was to look at all the different pathways in the energy transition to meet the aim of the Paris Agreement. So the first thing, obviously, uh, throughout these pathways, what do they have in common? First thing is improving energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. The second thing is decarbonizing the electricity sector. And then the third thing is decarbonizing the end use sectors. And those end use sectors include transport. So they're not the simplest thing to do, but they're an important part. And as uh, we know, transport globally so all forms of transport account for about 23%, so nearly a quarter of energy-related carbon dioxide emissions. So that's a big price to go after, mm. and you have to deal with that sector, decarbonise it in order to meet the Paris Agreement and meet well below 2 degrees and aim towards 1.5 degrees temperature increase. Now, when you think about the transport sector, there are things that are possibly easier to decarbonise like light duty cars. So people do know and they hear about electric vehicles, they hear about um, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, self-charging hybrids. And light duty passenger cars, maybe commercial delivery vans, they account for 45, 47% of emissions from the transport sector. There will be other options and people talk about fuel cells, hydrogen, biofuels, but the electrification has a, a good way forward uh, in terms of battery electric vehicles. When you go outside light duty transport to trucks, to uh, aviation and to shipping where you need a lot more energy to move things around, uh, ships have to get into the air, they have to carry the passengers, ships, uh, sorry, uh, planes do, ships have to carry a lot of cargo around the world, they need a lot more energy dense fuels. So batteries and electrification may not be the answer, part of the answer perhaps, for ships in terms of short haul ferries and things like that, maybe for planes, for short haul planes, but mostly we'll need to look for other solutions to decarbonize the transport sector. And you know, we, we think in our minds around other options such as biofuels, the aviation talks about sustainable aviation fuels, of which biofuels is a part, and how can you make those obviously sustainably so you don't interact with food crops, so you can make biofuels that are uh, consistent with your aims on maintaining biodiversity, maintaining good fresh water uh, use, uh, utilization. So biofuels is an option, there are lots of other technological options that are out there and the solutions will be likely different for, for trucks, for planes and for ships mm -hmm. given their different requirements and I think the pace of the transition both globally and across these different segments will differ as well. So we're all aiming to meet the Paris Agreement. Uh, a lot of organisations and sectors are aiming for net zero emissions by 2050 but the solutions will differ and we have to use all available technologies at our disposal to get there.